Welcome everybody. Just get this kicking off in just a moment. This is our Earth Hour Minecraft Education Edition. Celebrating Earth Hour with the Minecraft Lumen Challenges. Very excited to be here. We'll kick this off in just one moment. Give you a chance to get settled, sit down, and enjoy the experience. It's going to be a lot of fun today. <coughs> Should be able to hear some audio at this point in time. Lovely, lovely music. And if you need closed captions or subtitles today, you can enable them at the bottom of the live event session. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now being 12.31, I think we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm just going to end that music there. We're going to smoothly transition into our live event. Lovely to be here. Welcome everybody to our Earth Hour Minecraft Education Edition uh, the Lumen Challenge experience. My name is Andrew Bowser. I'm a Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialist. I'm here supported by the incredible Mr. Troy Waller, who's also a Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialist. Troy will be running a lot of the live event on the back end and also managing the chat. So if you have any questions or any Q&As, even if you're watching this uh, on demand, if you'd like to reach out to one of the lovely Microsoft Learning Delivery Specialists, feel free to do that as well. Now, I'd just like to first acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land in which we e-meet today. Also like to acknowledge the role of elders past and present and their future importance to Aboriginal Australia. I'm presenting to you from a Wabagal land here in the lovely city of Newcastle. And you're joining us today because we are here to celebrate Earth Hour and we're gonna showcase how Minecraft Education Edition can be a very valuable tool to increase awareness about the exposure of Earth Hour and why it's important for our energy sector, but also for the in, entire sustainability of planet Earth itself. So uh, lots of fantastic experiences for you today. And traditionally, what we generally do with these live events, they're student incursions. So we're going to demonstrate exactly how you would run such an event and then you would go away and run that in your own time. So we do a bit of a, a drive on drive through, encourage your students to get up to speed and also provide you with some resources. Now, if you are watching this as a live event or a video in that regard, post live event, there are some features here that you can uh, engage with. If you need to see something again, you could uh, rewind the experience, turn on closed captions, minimize or go full screen, turn the volume down in case I'm a little bit too loud. And if you do have a question, you'll see the Q&A if you are participating with us live today. Few accessibility options, again, closed captions, extremely important in this day and age, especially if you are in a noisy environment. So feel free to select the closed captions of your choice. Now, what will we learn today while we're looking at Earth Hour and Minecraft Education Edition? Well, there are three main outcomes that we are going to drive through two experiences. The first one, we're going to look at how energy transfer relationship between energy and forces actually take place. And we're going to use Minecraft as a vehicle, as the medium to demonstrate that. We're also going to have a look at the differences between energy sources, including renewable and non renewable sources. That's very important in uh, the 21st century uh, teaching and learning context of energy, renewable and non-renewable sources. And of course, lastly, we're going to have a look at earth and human activity, natural resources, human impact on natural systems and global climate change. Now, I was a geography teacher, so this plays very close to my heart and also to our future generations. And with that, we're going to have a look at two amazing lessons for you today. So we only have an hour, less than I should say, and I'm going to divide this up into two amazing lessons to demonstrate a lot of those key concepts. The first one is the Lumen City Challenge, okay? And this one's fantastic for, I would argue, stage three, four, or five moving forwards. And then we also have the Lumen Power Challenge, which is great for stage two, onwards. And I'm going to showcase both of these today. I'll spend just a little bit of time on the Lumen City Challenge and the majority of the time on the Lumen Power Challenge. And I'll drive both of these through and we'll do these live for you. Now, each of these amazing challenges to celebrate Earth Hour have their own resource page there as well. Okay. So uh, we'll have a look at them in a second and they will have some guided ideas and some objectives of what you would achieve in each lesson. So for our Lumen Power challenges that we have, 
Uh, students will discover various ways to generate electricity and at the end they will be able to um, have a look at different methods to generate electricity, including their pros and cons and roughly explain how they work. Very important, especially using an immersive program like Minecraft. Distinguish between renewable energy sources and non-renewable sources and identify locations suited for renew renewable energy energy sources, whether it's hydroelectricity or maybe wind turbines, for example. Understand how electricity is transported from sources to consumers. So lots of great little outcomes right there. And you're probably wondering, how do we do Minecraft education edition to show some of the transfer of, uh, of energy and also renewable and non-renewable sources? Now, as I jump into these lessons, there's four key lessons I want you to remember. And these are the key questions that we would have to answer after we finish these experiences. So my first key question to you would be, where does the electricity we use come from? So think about that as we explore these amazing immersive worlds. The second question is, what is the problem with some of the energy sources that you will see during these two challenges? The third question you need to think about with your colleagues, your teacher or your students is, what is renewable energy and how is it different from non-renewable sources? And of course, what is the energy transition? Hmm, lots of interesting key questions there. Let's see what we learn. Now, just to keep you on your toes before we jump in to the Lumen Challenge, which will get started in just a moment, I've got a question here for you. It's about renewable and non-renewable forms of energy, because that's what we're going to focus on today. So if you are watching live or you're watching via video, maybe you just want to say it out loud right now, but you can put this in the Q&A. Is this a form of renewable or non-renewable energy sources? Let me just back out of my, my lovely little PowerPoint there. I'm going to slowly move this across. If I can grab it, do I log it? Do I slowly move it across? No. All right, we're just going to go to the next slide because you can see a little pitch. Oh, I just got to click it. Sorry, I knew I programmed it in some way, shape or form. Uh, is that a form of renewable or non-renewable? What is that? That is the question, right? What is that? Renewable or non-renewable form? Um, of energy. All right. So have a conversation with someone in the room. Maybe pause the video if you're watching this in uh, post. What is that? Give you a second and play. All right. So they are wind turbines. Okay. And if you don't know what a wind turbine is, it's a device that converts the wind's kinetic energy into electrical energy. And it's a form of renewable energy. Okay. So we could actually use the wind to make more and more energy. We can't deplete the wind by harnessing the power of the wind. So we actually classify that as a form of renewable energy. We have hundreds and thousands of large wind turbines and installations known as wind farms around the world that generate over 650 gigawatts of power with 60 gigawatts added each year. We'd like to make our planet a greener and safer place for our future generations. So we're going to explore some amazing technologies and amazing forms of energy just like those wind turbines. So let's uh, get started. Okay, and I'm going to boot up the Minecraft Education Edition application. Now, uh, you should have the Minecraft Education Edition application by this point. If you don't, you can head on over to education.minecraft.net and there are some very, very user-friendly instructions to help you get started. Okay, most uh, organizations will have Minecraft Education Edition assigned to their office license, their A5 license in that regard, or their A3 license. Uh, however, you can uh, download a demo of Minecraft Education Edition to trial and use some of the Arrow of Code activities in your classroom. But honestly, one of the best and most immersive learning experiences covering hundreds and hundreds of lessons. So here we are. We're in the main menu of Minecraft Education Edition. And the first thing I'm going to do is just turn down my uh, Minecraft music solely because that can get uh, a bit repetitive when you're trying to listen to me. So I won't turn it all the way around, just down enough so you can hear me uh, explain some of these instructions. Now, I did demonstrate that we are going to look at two Minecraft Education Edition challenges today. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to find these that are in relation to Earth hour. We're going to hit the play button in our main menu. Okay. And then we've got a number of different options here. Now, these amazing lessons are built into the Minecraft Education Edition lesson library. So you don't need to go to an external website 
to download said lesson. So I'm going to click on view library. Okay, so that's our click number two. And obviously, Earth Hour, it's going to be around the science curriculum. So we're going to click subject kits and we're going to click on science. Okay. Now we have chemistry, biology, we are the rangers, extinction, biodiversity, crisis, and the lumen challenges in additional lessons. And you actually find both of these challenges right here. So you can see our lumen city challenge, which we're going to demonstrate right at the start because that one won't take too long. And then I'm going to give you more of an in-depth walkthrough of the lumen power challenge, which all relate around to those key questions that we asked right at the start of the lesson. So let's click on the Lumen City Challenge, shall we? And we're going to compare different energy sources in terms of cost, power output, and pollution. Now, this one's a bit of a tycoon building game, which is really, really cool. Now, you don't have to do this live with us, but at least come along with the journey where I show you how this particular uh, program actually works in Minecraft. We have some standards that we're going to address here. So we had a look at some of them. We're going to have a look at human activity, natural resources, human impact, and some objectives here, distinguish between renewable energy, compare different sources, and explain how energy storage is needed for the grid. Hmm. Let's jump into it. And I'm going to show you how you can use this amazing lesson to highlight sustainable renewable energy sources, cost, pollution, and awareness. So this is a really cool lesson. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played any kind of like simulation games we have to simulate you know the cost the pollution the energy output they've designed this world to be really really intuitive okay and i'm going to help you work this out so when you do this in your own time you'll know exactly how this works so we appear right here in our very first starting room and i'm slowly looking around and the first thing that we need to do with our lumen city challenge is open up our chest and grab the instructions. Very important that we open our chest and grab the instructions because these instructions are going to be the game guiding ideas and concepts that we need to follow to achieve our goal. So, we're the mayor. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations on your recent appointment, um, or the mayor, depending on where you are in the world. As you know, you have the huge task of cleaning up the waste left behind by the last mayor or mayor who relied too heavily on non-renewable energy sources. We can't make the same mistake. There's more information at the town centre that will help you decide on how to plan the growth of your city, including which energy sources to use. When you're ready, click the button. So we need to explore how to grow our city by balancing pollution and cost hmm. and energy output. So we need to hit this button and that teleports us to the town centre. Look at this, absolutely sensational. Now, the first thing I'm going to point up, I'll point out in this regard, but I'm going to point up, is that we have a number of different categories here. So this one's the net energy, okay? So we only have one at the moment. So we don't have much energy coming in. In fact, our poor town probably has no energy coming in. So we've only got one out of the uh, many, many bars that we have here. We also have a category on pollution. Okay, so we, ooh, we're we almost at max pollution. We're a bit high on the pollution scale. Uh, the pollution in terms of noise, sorry, that was greenhouse gas. Uh, there's no pollution in terms of noise being generated. Pollution in terms of waste, quite high at the moment. Pollution in terms of light, not much. And then we've got the city population and the overall city rating. Now, as we go and develop our city, right, these factors are going to change, okay? The goal of this particular learning experience is, is to balance our city so we have an overall high city rating. We want to max that out as much as possible. And that's going to be dependent on whether we keep our pollution down and our costs down and our output up and our noise pollution down, our greenhouse gases down. And to achieve that, we'll need to set up a number of non-renewable and renewable energy sources. I'd love to say... Let's just go completely with renewable, but you'll see that we're at this current point in time, we do need a little bit of a balance in terms of cost, output, and pollution. Now, in this chest, there is another lovely little set of instructions, and this just explains what is in front of us. The city ratings on display on your left are your guide to how your city is performing. Hmm. Your aim is to grow the city population to earn revenue 
and net energy rating while keeping all four pollution ratings down. So what we have to do is increase the number of people moving into our city so we get paid more revenue while keeping pollution down so it's a bit of a bit of a simulation it's quite uh, quite interesting to do if you do this successfully your overall city rating will grow which shows how well you're doing your job fantastic now there is uh whoops one more chest here that just has uh some instructions if you need them okay so this one here is just explaining the basics and what you would do in terms of uh, you know, running this city. So at the end of each day, we'll receive some money, some tax, as we call it, okay? And then we use that tax or that income to build more structures. And we have to constantly man manage our, um, our aspects here, okay? And you will notice that these different colors that we have on the wall here represent different buildings. So brown is housing, green are parks, uh, we have forest, retail, entertainment, and depending on what we select will be what we shall build. Now, I'll just take a quick uh, snapshot of that so I have a reference and we don't have to keep teleporting back to town. That's generally what you're meant to do, but I'll, uh, I'll have a little quick guide here. So we can build all sorts of wonderful things. Solar panels, batteries, wind turbines, dams, nuclear power plants, fossil fuel stations, lots of things that we can do here. We have a, um, a set amount of money. And we need to go out into this big, amazing city, which hasn't been built yet, but we're going to construct it and make sure that we're generating enough electricity and having enough revenue coming in so we can continue to grow and build our city. Now, it's not completely bare. You can see there's a um, stadium over there. But under each plot here, you can see those color references okay so for example the uh green one represented a i've got a picture here of a park okay the black one was a fossil fuel station that we have here all right the orange one was a retail so that will bring us more money in but it's going to need more electricity so our energy output is very low that you can see on the screen so i'm going to build a fossil fuel station probably not a good idea but for the purpose of this lesson, what you have to do is get out your house, okay? And then right click on the tile that you'd like to build. So in this regard, we're gonna build a fossil fuel station because we don't have a lot of power output right now. So if I right click, there we go. We have an entire coal power station. Now the problem with this, the more coal power stations I build, right? Um, Unfortunately, the more pollution that's going to be created. So I need to balance this out very, very carefully. My power grid is still stable. Now, these constant um, notifications pop up on the screen. Okay. So it just kind of uh, keeps you aware of what's going on there. So that's good. We've got a coal power station. Let's build a retail space, which is the cyan. Or cyan orange, I should say. should know my colors. And uh, there we go. We've just built... A lovely retail space. Now, if I give you a side view of our city block, for example, we've got a coal power station and we have a retail space. So that's going to generate more income, which allows us to build more structures. Now, uh, let's build a wind turbine, shall we? Which is that cream color right here because we still have low energy. So I'm going to build a wind turbine. Now, we did talk about wind power right at the start of this lesson and how it's a renewable source of energy, right? So pollution level is still okay. Not too bad. We have a coal power, we've got a wind turbine, our city rating is still just one at the moment, okay? And what else would we like to add here? Let's balance that out with some housing, which is this gray or brown block, okay? So there's a house built. And he's starting to get the idea, right? Uh, all of these structures cost money, okay? And I need to go through and literally build a city just by selecting the different key indicators and make sure that I can get my city rating up to a 10 out of 10 without making sure my pollution is high, making sure those pollution uh, levels stay as low as possible. It's quite tricky, quite tricky. But with a little bit of experimentation, you will be able to um, completely build 
your very own city. So to grow my population, I'm building a few more houses, as you can see here, and I'll just fill out this city block that we have. So I've um, got a few more houses. Let's put some more retail in here. Just going to get out of the way. <laughs> and uh, what's the last thing that I haven't built here that we can probably put on here? Uh, entertainment. Our houses will need entertainment, which is the purple uh, block. So let's build that. Uh -huh, look at that. Nice little, uh, nice little store that you can see right there. Maybe a disco, disco party. And uh, you can see we've built our very first city block. And we have to make sure that we're providing enough energy, clean energy, enough income, and various other elements to um, our city. I've even got a wind farm. Probably not a good idea to put that wind turbine right uh, next to those houses. So I did want to delete something. You just right click on the red block and away it goes. So let's replace that with, uh, <laughs> going to do this, uh, with a solar power array, right? So that's probably a lot quieter for um, for the houses, right? So that's, that's very nice. It's got a nice little solar power array. Now, I'm not going to go on with the rest of this particular lesson because uh, you can really have a lot of fun with this in your own time. You have plenty of city blocks to explore, plenty of management aspects to do. By right-clicking on uh, the lovely little I guess, computer that we have. That will bring you back to the town center and I'll reassess, okay, my city rating system. So you can see here that the pollution of greenhouse gases actually has decreased by one light, which is very, very nice. Our uh, pollution for noise hasn't changed. Our waste pollution has gone up just a little bit by one square because we did build a coal power plant right so you have to be very careful very very careful all right and our light pollution has not changed maybe we add a few more city blocks that will change so fantastic activity honestly really easy to do you don't have to bash the walls you don't have to manually construct anything it's literally just selecting what type of buildings you'd like to achieve having those key conversations with your staff and colleagues your students about different forms of renewable energy what do neighborhoods need where is the right balance for sustainability uh, in this regard to promote earth hour so let's see how high you can get the overall city rating when you have more time. Fantastic little experience. That is the Lumen City Challenge. Okay. Now we're going to take you to another beautiful uh, Earth Hour lesson called the Lumen Power Challenge. And this adds on top of our Lumen City Challenge. This one's more of like a, there's my lovely little neighborhood in the distance there. More like a simulation on managing all those key aspects. But let's actually talk about the differences between renewable and non-renewable energy sources and the transfer of energy. We do that in the Lumen Power Challenge. So I'm gonna jump into that world right now. So same experience, we're gonna click save and exit, go to our lesson library, okay? And remember it's under the science subject kit. So science, additional lessons, and this time we have the Lumen Power challenge okay for the next 20 minutes or so i'm going to demonstrate this amazing world and i love this world it's so hands-on there's five activities we have to complete and each activity gives us some general information about energy power and its sources and how it affects the environment so i'm going to click create world and uh this one i like is because you can modulate it you can do this as a a, a group within your class or you can do this individually okay we spawn in this amazing little neighborhood, okay? And you can see some power lines up there. We're already starting to feel uh, the, the theme of energy. We can see some nuclear reactors over in the distance, some solar panels there as well. And uh, it says here, welcome to explore this map to uncover how energy is generated, stored, and transported. There are five challenges around town. Head to the red beacons to begin. So, you will see these big beacons in the sky. They're big, tall beacons. And the red beacons generally means there's a challenge that I need to complete, okay? And uh, what I encourage my students to do when we do this for the very first time is to just get them to explore. Get them to have a bit of a wander around. I can see there's a big red beacon right there. 
which tells me there's an activity that I need to perform here. Okay, so let's run to this beacon, have a look at the sign and see what the problem is, shall we? Oh no, the offshore wind farm is having problems. The turbines have stopped and they need your help. Take a boat and follow the river to the offshore transformer. There you'll be geared up to help fix the turbines. On this map, you were at the bottom, you travel by boat. So there's our map. And I need to uh, jump in my lovely little rowboat and go over to the uh, offshore turbines, okay? And we need to fix them so our town has energy. Now, when we get there, we'll have some informational facts about what the offshore turbines actually do, how they benefit with our energy sources. So let's put our boat down in our lovely little river. And this is a great world because uh, students can't destroy or create. They literally have to engage in the activity. So come with me. There'll be a, a bit of a running round on this one because I need to take you to each activity. And uh, we're going to sail through this town. This is the great thing about Minecraft. It's so immersive. I can have a look at all the different uh, renewable energy sources. Like straight ahead, does anyone recognize them? We did speak about them right at the start. If you're watching this live, maybe you want to shout that out and be like, I remember them. That's what Mr. Bowser showed us right at the start. Renewable or non-renewable? Do you remember? Hmm, what are they? So they are our wind turbines, our lovely wind turbines. We'll do an activity with them in a second. And uh, here's our offshore energy source. So here we are. We're at the offshore transformer. I'm going to climb up here. It's so fun, honestly. Absolutely sensational. I wish I had Minecraft when I was in school. I'm going to grab another boat, <laughs> just in case. You never know. I don't want to get stuck on the offshore transformer. And there's some instructions here about wind power. This is the great thing about Minecraft. You're learning while playing, right? Such a great experience to be in this three-dimensional environment. So you can see wind turbines take a lot of space. Some people might find them ugly. I don't. They also don't work if there's no wind. Ah, that's a good point. I can see why they're out here in the ocean or in the, in the lake in this regard. It's probably a very windy area. Good conversation piece. Uh, therefore, wind turbines are often put in the sea because there is more space and more wind. Makes perfect sense. Often a transformer, which increases the voltage generated by electricity, is put out um, on a platform in the sea. So that's where we are right now. All right, we're right by the wind turbines that you can see in the distance uh, over there. And this is the transformer to help build energy before we send it back to the town. And these really exist. It's actually quite incredible. Now it says here, to begin the challenge, press the button. So I hit that button and this is really fun. The wind turbines have stopped working. Put the uh, Lytra on your back and use it to glide. Land on top of each turbine to start them again. So we're at the top of this amazing town. You can see some non-renewable energy sources to the left. You see a coal plant power plant right there. We have a nuclear waste power plant right there. And we have a uh, renewable form of energy, which is these wind turbines. Now they've stopped working. So I'm going to put on my glider, okay? And then I need to jump and fly. Now, if you fall like I did, it just restarts you, okay? So don't worry about missing it. I got worried the very first time I did this because I um, flew into a, a wall. But you land on the turbine and you hit the button to start. So that's one. All right. We've got five to start. Oh, almost. Now, this is great for hand-eye coordination as well. See how, uh, how many turbines you can start. Obviously, I'm not a pro, but I think I've got that one. Yes, there we go. That's two. So I've repaired two turbines at the moment. I'm getting good at flying. Should be a superhero. And that, oh, look at that. That's three, almost there. There's two more to go. Fly to the fourth turbine. Oh, look at that. That's four. I'm on a roll. And the last wind turbine is just up there in the distance. Got to make it. And let go. Look at that. And that is five. You have repaired a wind turbine. You've successfully repaired all wind turbines. Challenge complete. Fly back to town to continue the challenges. And this is great. So I can just 
jump off, fly like a superhero. I am the energy superhero in this world right here. And uh, we're going to fly back to town, okay? And I'll just land just down here. Now, you can't die or anything like that. This is a completely educational experience. So now we're up to our second activity, solar panels. Hmm, interesting. So we just learned about wind turbines and offshore transformers, and we helped start five turbines themselves. But now we're going to learn about solar panels. Do you have solar panels at home? Does your school have solar panels? I have solar panels right here in this house, and we can learn about the importance of solar panels for Earth Day or Earth Hour. Many houses produce electricity by solar panels on the roof. A solar panel converts sunlight directly into electricity. Solar panels often generate power when it's sunny and not during the night. Sometimes large home batteries are used to store energy at the night. Now, there's lots of great information there about solar panels. In the interest of time, I, I don't have time to read every word, but we have some great pictures, real pictures, of what solar panels look like on people's roofs. Photosynthesis is a, uh, a mechanism used by plants to turn sunlight into energy in the solar panels do a very similar thing by converting the sun rays or the ultraviolet light collected by the sun into malleable electricity as well. But what is our challenge? Because we have a big red beacon here. A recent storm has damaged the solar panels on the roof of these houses. First, oh, sorry, that's one sentence of the roof of these houses. First, you must find a way up onto the roof and then right-click the damaged solar panels to repair them. The job is complete once all solar panels are fixed. So, luckily, we're doing this virtually. Do not encourage anyone to climb onto their roof and try and repair their own solar panels. But in this regard, we're going to open up this house. Oops. And I need to go up to the roof and fix solar panels. Let's pretend in this regard I'm a certified solar panel repairer. So a little arrow telling me to go out the window. And let's look for some of these solar panels up on that, the roof. And let's see here. Aha. Up here, I can see the blue indicator. So here's some solar panels. Damage. So let's fix that one and make it red so it's collecting or yellow collecting so let's select that one there we go roof number six is fixed okay six and fixed they hard to say at the same time or oh, there's some solar panels on that roof that look damaged as well so i would need to go over here this is a great experience just just to gamify the learning there you go. open up this person's house knock knock solar panel repairer coming in and uh let's find a way to the roof okay up we go open the door sorry just walking through don't mind me and uh, i think i might go around here all right go around the edge uh-huh this is looking promising can i jump up there i can see the solar panels let's go in here open that just trying to get to the oh this is the bathroom <laughs> let's out this window here we go thank you uh, mr toilet let's fix that 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 just right click on all the damaged solar panels which are the blue ones and that's looking oh missed two one two there we go roof one is fixed so we fixed two homes right now fantastic let's jump off the, that home right there let's have a look at this one this one needs repairing Okay, keep going up here. Again, just a dry run to show you exactly what your students will need to do so you can help guide them. Ooh, we're going up into the attic in this regard, in this home right here. Now, you can't um, just smash windows or bust walls. There's no cheating in that regard. Okay, you actually have to go through certain paths. And uh, here we are on the top of this roof. Ah, there's those tricky solar panels so let's fix that one that one that one and roof two has been fixed now we're going to fix the last one just so you can see the color of this beacon change when it's green it generally means that you have uh completed the activity for this um for this challenge okay so there's one more house i believe that we need to uh fix it's the house over here with the tree house next to it i think it's one more house Let's have a look. Maybe I haven't been in that house, but we'll have a look. So up the treehouse, and I love how they've designed this. They've made this so, so inclusive, which is really cool. You know, we've got a bit of nature there, got a bit of 
bit of industrialization over there. And uh, let's fix all of these solar panels, turn them blue. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I love, I could be a solar repairer, I think. Be nice. Very nice. Love working with renewable energies. Um, and we have one up here. Roof three is being fixed. Fantastic. And I can see another roof over there. Let's fix this. Almost there. And now there are five challenges that you do. They relate to renewable and non-renewable sources. Obviously, we're doing two renewable uh, forms of energy. Oh, I tried to jump. <laughs> And um, it does also, we do also explore non-renewable forms of energy. So these first two are on renewable that I've selected. It's renewable forms of energy, obviously are very important, very important for sustainability and our future. So this is the last one that I'm fixing here. We'll have a look at the non-renewable sources and all the activities that you're doing with the Lumen Power Challenge are really hands-on. All right, so they're, they're quite engaging. There we go. All solar panels have been repaired. Woohoo! Challenge complete. And you will notice our beacon over there. You can see that right there. That is green. Okay. The idea is to make all of the beacons green. All five beacons need to be green for us to unlock the major challenge, which is a huge quiz on uh, renewable and non-renewable sources and the transfer of energy. So uh, very exciting. So there's one green beacon. There's two green beacons. All right. So I will take you to uh, another one. Okay. We have a little bit more time. So we're going to come on over to another activity. I'll show you as many activities as I can to help you promote energy awareness and Earth Hour with your students. All right. So running over to this uh, nuclear power plant. Okay. The good thing about Minecraft that we won't be exposed to any nuclear waste because this is a virtual experience, but we can read some information about nuclear power stations. Unfortunately, nuclear power stations produce radioactive nuclear waste. Radioactive nuclear waste can cause a lot of harm to people and the environment if it's not safely stored. Nuclear power stations are built around nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors work by splitting atoms. Of nuclear material like uranium, a small amount of nuclear material can generate a large amount of energy in the form of heat. Unfortunately, the atom splitting also generates extremely dangerous radiation that must never escape the nuclear reactor. Therefore, its safety is very important in these places. So it gives you some great information about the forms of energy um, right here. And obviously, the heat from the nuclear reactor is used to boil water into steam, and the steam which makes a turbine rotate. The rotation is converted to electricity by a generator. Bet you didn't know that. Mm, learning something new. I'm learning something new. So uh, let's go do this activity. This one's fun. I like this one. I mean, they're all fun, but this one's, you know, it's a race against the clock. So you have to get used to the room. I've already been used to the room. I've done this challenge before. And uh, I have to basically run the nuclear power station, right? Different problems come up. I have to fix them. So, you know, don't do this in real life, please. <laughs> do it digitally. So I'm going to hit this button, and that's going to start our Minecraft challenge. Oh, no, you must hurry. The nuclear reactor is going to overheat. Get on top of it and hit the button to raise the fuel rods. Oh, no, we don't want a nuclear meltdown happening in our lovely little town. We just fix all the solar panels. So let's go up, and we're going to go and lower the nuclear rods by pressing this button. The heat sinks are damaged. Find the heat sink and move the iron block so it's on top of the red block. Don't worry, I've done this before. So we're going to come to this is the heat sink. I'm going to press this button and then this button. Perfect. The reactors run out of coolant. Fill up three water bottles and right click into the coolant vent. So let's cool the reactor down. I've got three water bottles here. I'm going to pour this into the coolant input. One two and three perfect the nuclear reactors produce some waste quickly nudge it down the waste disposal chute okay so that's over here there's our waste in our little mine cart so let's give that a push let's push it down the waste disposal chute the pipes are leaking press the button on the wall to repair the pipes oh no so let's go up here 
Now, this will be great for the kids because, oh, I fell off. The um, A lot of the journey of this is the kids working around exploring where to go and what to do to keep the nuclear reactor cool. Um, I've obviously played this one before and I'm just going through it in the interest of time. But just to show you the, the variety of um, um, instances. So the core has risen. You must work faster. So you have to do this a number of times. And, uh, you know, it wants me to do it again, but in a different order. And I think it will make the students do it again every time in a different order, just so they get really good at it. I think they have to do it a maximum of three times. So um, let's quickly run around and do all this really fast. Hit that one and then that one. That's fantastic. And then uh, the reactor's going to go over heat. We have to do the fuel rods. So let's go up right to the top. Not fall off again, Mr. Bowser. Press the fuel rod button. And the pipes are leaking. Let's go and stop those pipes from leaking. I'm just watching the clock there, making sure we don't run out of time because we do have to do the quiz. Oh, no! The quiz right at the end. So even a, a Minecraft expert sometimes can't make the leap of faith. One, two, perfect. There we go. All right. The UK reactor produced some waste. Let's quickly go push it down the chute. Okay. And let's see if we make it this time. Did I do it fast enough? No, I did not. So anyway, you continue to do that. Follow them. Beat a certain time. And then you will um, achieve that particular challenge. Now, I'll show you one more before we go to our, our quiz room. Because the quiz is what really brings this learning experience together. It will quiz the kids and the students, and, and or you, if you are a student watching this right now, and test your knowledge on all of the signs and all of the activities that you've uh, that you've done today. All right. Now, this next activity that we're doing is going to involve a little bit of adventure. Okay. So you you're going to explore this town. There's going to be many challenges for you to do. Up to five, I should say. And um, one of these challenges, you know, we have to clear out a dam, okay? So, you know, a dam is is great for hydroelectricity. And uh, as I explore this town, I'm just going to run up this road here, and then I'll teleport us to the final quiz room. And we'll do a bit of a quiz together based on the very limited uh, experiences that I've, I've shown you. I haven't done the full um, uh, lesson in this regard just yet. But um, let's go. Actually, we might do this one. This one's... Oh, no, this is the final challenge room. So when you do all the challenges, you can see here this red beacon, you come here and the final challenge room will open. But you do have to do those other challenges uh, first. Like It's quite a big and expansive world um, that you can do this in. Okay, so lots to explore, lots of learnings to take place. When I run this in class, kids just love just looking around, just looking around and having a look at all the different forms of sustainable energy get stuck in people's yards like I just did. <laughs> and um, just doing each each different activity in a very different way. Uh, some obviously involve repairing solar panels, starting wind turbines, um, sailing, exploring different aspects of this island. I'm just following these power lines right now. Let's go for a swim. Jump in the swim like I've got a little boat here. Okay. And I'll take you to the... Um, to the end room but there's just so much that you can actually do with the uh the lumen power challenge okay so we could sail along and go to our next activity now uh in the interest of time i don't have time to continue to do the three other activities so what i'm going to do is teleport us to the end room okay and this allows us to I'm just gonna bring up my command bar um to do a bit of a quiz right at the end to see what we have learnt regarding energy transfer, renewable and non-renewable energy sources in Minecraft Education Edition. So uh, what I'm doing right now is just teleporting myself. I'm cheating in that regard because this is the webinar. And um, I'm doing this so I can show you. Otherwise, I just don't have time to do them all and you won't get to see the final uh, quiz. Oops. Good one, Mr. Bowser. Doesn't know his commands. Uh, so I would like to teleport uh, at myself and then i'm going to enter these coordinates 1179 68 and 60 all right that should there we go take me 
to the power quiz. Now, you will unlock this quiz naturally when you finish all of the five challenges. OK, so I do challenge you uh -huh, to do that. But let's take a, a bit of a, a power quiz right now. So question one, which of these methods of generating power produces greenhouse gases? Is it hydropower, wind power, nuclear power, or coal power? Hmm. I think it's coal power in this regard. So let's hit coal power. Question two, which electricity generation method does not use a ro rotating turbine? Coal solar uh, hydroelectric dams or nuclear i'm going to say solar question three why are nuclear power stations located near seas or rivers mm, to split the water molecules for the workers to drink water is required for cooling so workers can travel by boat i want to say water is required for cooling which electricity generation method does not need water to operate wind hydro nuclear Coal. Oh, it's a tricky one. Wind. Wind. They need a lot of space and wind. Therefore, they're out in the air. I'm going to say wind in this regard. I've seen them in fields. Uh, what is the main advantage of using wind turbines? No wind means no power. It's a disadvantage. No carbon dioxide emissions. Definitely an advantage. People find them beautiful. <laughs> um, hundreds of them. Now, people don't find them beautiful from what I read on our billboard. So I'm going to say no carbon dioxide. Um, emissions, which at least does not apply to solar panels. So you get the idea. You'd go through, do the quiz, uh, do a lot of great learning. We'll just do two more. Uh, you can place them at home. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, um, do that quiz. Don't get them wrong. You can always just start again. So you just hit the power quiz. Well, it's good to know I got them all right up until that point. There's 15 questions just FYI. Okay. So I'm going to exit out of that and we're going to jump back into our PowerPoint uh, slide. We're going to do a bit of a recap because I think that's enough to get you started. It's two amazing lessons around renewable and non-renewable -re sources uh, using Minecraft Education Edition as a learning platform to make it such an immersive experience. It is very cool. So uh, let's go to our reflection on the terminology. So I put this in here, just kind of talk about some of the words that we encountered today during our, our live lesson. And hopefully you will encounter, encounter these as you go through and explore those lessons in your own time in depth. So work, the application of force over a distance, energy, the capacity to do work or produce heat. There are different forms of energy. Uh, kinetic, as we saw, potential nuclear, radiant, electrical, chemical, and thermal. Interesting. Power, the work done in a unit of time. Did you know that? I only learned that recently. Uh, renewable energy, energy generated from sources that naturally replenishes themselves. So solar, wind, or hydro, and we did talk about that with our wind turbines. Fossil fuels, combustible organic materials such as coal. Energy transformation, the shift away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy. And we, we did see that during that very first city challenge where we had to really be careful about the balance of what we were building. Greenhouse gases, we learned that now just our last lesson, a gas that absorbs infrared radiation combines or contributes to the greenhouse effect. And of course, the greenhouse effect itself, the warming of the Earth's surface and atmosphere. And that's why it's important to understand the effect of non-renewable sources. So where do you go from here once you uh, explore those amazing lessons? What I would recommend is that you jump in to the Lumen City Challenge and the Lumen Power Challenge and you spend the time to really explore these amazing lessons um, when you do have a, have a bit more flexibility. You're not not trying to learn within a small one hour period. So we do have these on the Minecraft Education Edition website. There are guiding ideas for the students or for you, if you are a student. There's some answers that we have here. So the four key questions that we addressed, where does electricity that we use come from? What is the problem with these energy sources? What is renewable energy? What is the energy transformation? So those key questions were the questions that we asked right at the start of this lesson. You should be able to answer nearly all of them. And if you can't by this point, you need to go and play the Lumen City Challenge and the Lumen Power Challenge. Okay, so uh, two of those amazing lessons are available via the Minecraft Education Edition 
lesson library and also on the Minecraft Education Edition website there as well. Now, we'd just like to thank you for joining us today on behalf of Troy Waller and myself. Thank you for joining this live lesson for Minecraft Education Edition Hour of Code, well, Hour of Code, Earth Day, I should say. I've been doing a lot of coding lately, or Earth Hour. Um, looking at the Lumen Challenge and the Lumen Power Challenge, so the City Challenge and the Power Challenge. Obviously, some two fantastic lessons to help promote the uh, awareness of renewable energy sources, the importance of, of maintaining balance on planet Earth to make sure that we are catering for the future generations. So thank you so much for having us. We really hope that you go away and explore those two free lessons via the Minecraft lesson library and of course this has been recorded so you can come back and watch this again in your own time we appreciate you being here and we'll see you very very soon in the next one thank you very much everybody bye bye